Hello and welcome back and today I want to tell you why you should be considering QNAP NAS. So moving on with our NAS buyer's guide, today I want to talk about QNAP, why you should buy QNAP, what are the pros, what are the cons, and ultimately what makes QNAP right for some of you. Now we've already talked about some other NAS brands, but QNAP's the one, I'll be honest, I've been looking forward to talking about the most, because they are a brand that has really strangely developed over time and developed its own special niche, because they do share the podium, the top podium there, with Synology. The third place is constantly changing between a few companies but the top two spots have always been Synology QNAP, Synology QNAP and what QNAP give you is something that most people that have ever built their own PC or are far more IT versed want and that is hardware. They do have a great line in software that we'll talk about later in the video but in terms of hardware QNAP give you the very best of everything. They are, I've always said, the innovators of the NAS industry, especially in hardware, but just generally. They have pushed boundaries and pushed the envelope in ways that no other NAS brand has. Case in point, Thunderbolt NAS. No one else out there until recently had a Thunderbolt enabled QNAP, uh, a Thunderbolt enabled NAS, and QNAP were the ones that stepped in there first with a Thunderbolt 2 and inevitably a Thunderbolt 3 enabled range of NAS devices. These are NASs that work on a network and an internet level, but also let you connect a PC or Mac system point to point over Thunderbolt and directly access the files on that NAS. And that's multiple people connecting via multiple Thunderbolt cables while simultaneously enabling the network and internet connectivity of a NAS. Something that no other NAS brand until very recently has ever done. On top of that, they've dalli uh, dalliance with direct attached forms of storage, whereby there's a USB port on the NAS and you could connect via USB to the NAS and directly access the contents of your storage. Something which a number of you will probably be very surprised to hear is not common. It's something that's very rare indeed for you to be able to access the direct contents of your NAS over USB and as well as network and internet connectivity too. Now, QNAP Almost all of their chassis, with the exception of the very, very low end, are metal in design. They all feature um, great internal hardware, and they both cover, They, although they cover a range of CPUs, it's worth mentioning that they are one of the few NAS brands that cover i3, i5, and i7 based CPUs, with a lot of other NAS brands skipping the i series and going straight to Xeon or sticking back here with Celerons and the occasional Pentium, although QNAP does cover those as well. On top of that, um, QNAP are one of the few brands out there that cover AMD CPUs, and I'm talking like the brand new Ryzen series, as well as a number of the other R6 and R7 based CPUs that are graphically enabled. And where that leads into is the ability that a lot of QNAP NASs have HDMI ports. They have LCD panels on the front, and effectively a large array of ways in which you can directly interact with your NAS. So if that's something that's going to be very important to you, then Chances are QNAP is the NAS brand for you. Real-time LCD panels giving you information about the NAS. Remote controls that work over infrared for you to access your NAS or watch TV. HDMI ports spanning HDMI 1.4B and 2.0. Multiple HDMI ports in some cases. And of course, Thunderbolt and USB connectivity. But that's not all. Um, a lot of QNAP's net and definitely a larger degree of 2018 releases of QNAP NAS have PCIe slots and lots of 10 GBE. And it's something that I've really criticized Synology for for a while. I've criticized Synology on the terms of them never adopting Thunderbolt, despite their Mac popularity. But on top of that, most Synology NASs, unless you're gonna spend four, five, six thousand pounds, will make you choose between 10 GBE or M2 SSD cache or anything with a PCIe slot. They give you one way to expand. There are so many QNAPs that have multiple PCIe slots on the rear, giving you 10 GBE connectivity, 40 GBE connectivity, NVM SSD cache, um, wireless AP cards, graphics cards, actually installing a GPU PCIe card, like a GTX, um, and you know, all of those sorts of cards, the big buggers, install those inside a QNAP, and therefore access the power, the rendering power of a graphics card on that NAS. Now, you can use that uh, in a virtual machine, so you can run a virtual machine environment, either with Microsoft's own third-party software, or using uh, VMware tools and stuff, 
or use QNAP's own virtualization station or container station or Linux station to run multiple virtual machines and access a graphics card, a sound card, any card that you install inside the device. And this is what I mean about innovation from QNAP. They have pushed the envelope of the NAS. Synology have created a great storage system, a storage system that can be used for editing live over 10 GBE and work, as well as accessing over 1 GBE and the internet. But what QNAP have given you is a far, far bespoke NAS experience and the ability to add lots of features of functionality as well as give you a number of those features and functionality very early on. Now, there of course, there are pros and cons. Um, one of the things which a number of you are going to have to decide whether it's a pro or con is to do with configurations. Now, Synology's catalogue of NAS is a lot smaller. It's smaller for two reasons. One, they release fewer units. Two, they, or the units they release are normally only available in one or two configurations of hardware. QNAP, on the other hand, have a tendency to release a NAS and then spec up or spec down certain parts so you can balance your spending, which is a good thing, but it doesn't half make things confusing. So say you want to buy the T, uh, the 82 series, which has um, i5, i3, or i7 CPU. That range is available in four, six, and eight bay devices. It's also available with or without Thunderbolt, and it's also available with or without 10 GBE. The result is, and remember, different CPUs as well, and 8 gig of RAM, 16 gig of RAM, 32 gig of RAM, 64 gig of RAM. All of these configurations mean that that one range can span about 30 different lines, and that's one product range. Then you look at the 7.7 series, the 7.3 series, and it continues. So it can make things very, very complicated. And if you're not too IT versed, the QNAP range can make you a little confused. That said, if you know your IT, you know your CPU from your memory, from your storage, if you know the differences and know what you need, then chances are you'll be able to scale your budget, your 500, your 1000, your 2000 pounds in favor of the bits you need and therefore get a solution that works for you. Um, another thing that's not great about QNAP, their warranties. Almost the entire range of QNAP devices have two years of warranty, which is very disappointing. Given that their devices have a very low failure rate, to my knowledge, and also at Span.com we've seen so many units come back and forth, that QNAP doesn't seem to have a failure rate any different to any other NAS brand. You know, they're all pretty great units, but you know, nothing is infallible. But still, nevertheless, they seem to be sticking rigidly to this two-year warranty with only some high, high-end rack mount devices featuring three and five year warranty. For the most part though, two years all the way, which is a little disheartening given that you've got companies like Buffalo providing three and five years, companies like Synology producing three and five years, and it's just not having that option at a low enough level on QNAP that makes it a little disappointing. Um, apart from that, the only other downer I would say for QNAP is unlike Synology, sorry to make another comparison, their attitude towards first party apps isn't quite as good as Synology. If you're running third party apps, and by third party apps I mean your own software, and you're buying a NAS that's just meant to sit there and do what it's told, and you're not going to use the software that it arrives with for the most part, a QNAP will be great for you, because QNAP has incredible support for third party apps, second only to Acer Store, that we'll talk about in another video. Whereas Synology have invested a lot of money in their own first party apps, their own um, calendar application that synchronizes with their chat application, that synchronizes with their moments application, a photo tagging and facial recognition uh, interface. So I'll you drive that one portal access point. Great first party apps, but if you're not gonna use them, then you're gonna end up with a Synology that's got poor hardware. And again, that's why the QNAP's great in terms of its hardware and its support of third party applications. But their first party apps are all right. They're definitely the second best in the market, got to give them that. But it's just QNAP's first party apps are still not as good, not as fluid, and, and not as imaginative as a number of acute um, Synology applications that I've seen. But that said, it's still a great um, NAS brand, and definitely if you're looking for means of directly accessing a NAS and not relying to, as much on the network and the internet, and not feeling like your hands are tied, definitely one for you. Remember, remote controls, Thunderbolt, HDMI, USB direct access, and more. 
next time I'm going to talk about Acer Store and otherwise if you've got any questions do pop them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully it made your choice a little easier. We will talk about individual units in ranges with the new releases this year but do click like if you enjoyed this and subscribe to learn more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.